Have you ever asked yourself, hey, what happened to that guy or that gal? Only to find out that he or she never really went away. It happens to me all of the time, especially when I'm watching MeTV or one of the other over-the-air stations that specialize in reruns from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And such is the case with Sean Cassidy. I loved Sean on the Hardy Boys Mysteries. On that show he starred as younger brother Joe. Parker Stevenson was brother Frank. And week after week the Hardy Boys would solve mystery after mystery. Just like in the books that my old man would read to me and my siblings sometimes before we went to bed. But unlike the books, every once in a while Nancy Drew would be along for the ride. Good old Pamela Sue Martin. I made a video about her a while back. I'll post a link to that video at the end of this one. In the Hardy Boys, well, the TV show was a hit. Well, kinda. Apparently it was never a ratings blockbuster, but you know, it was popular enough to land on the cover of Dynamite magazine. That's how I knew a show was a big deal when I was a kid. One of the best magazines ever. Dynamite let all of us middle schoolers know what TV shows and movies we should be paying attention to. And of course, along with the Hardy Boys, Sean was having terrific success on the radio airwaves. His debut album, simply titled Sean Cassidy, yielded the mega hit Da Do Run Run, which went all the way to number one in the US. Sean also had another top ten single from that album, the Eric Carmen penned That's Rock and Roll. And of course, Dynamite Magazine was there to confirm to me Sean's status as a megastar. Apparently, by the end of 1977, Sean was as big as Star Wars. Man, what a great photo shoot that had to be. Sean and Chewbacca just hanging out, talking about showbiz stuff, maybe exchanging phone numbers. What? You think that picture is photoshopped? Did they do that way back then? I don't know. I guess I prefer to think that they were buddies. And while the Hardy Boys TV show seemed to be losing a little steam, especially when Pamela Sue left the show, Sean's musical career was skyrocketing. His second album, Born Late, was a big hit as well, yielding two more top 40 singles, Hey Dini and Do You Believe in Magic. When the Hardy Boys was finally cancelled, Sean was cast as the lead in the TV version of the classic movie Breaking Away. Truthfully, it was not a bad adaptation. Sure, it was missing Dennis Quaid and Daniel Stern, but Jackie Earl Haley was along for the ride. Unfortunately, the show didn't catch on and it was canceled after just one season. Additionally, Sean's next two albums were not hits. The music world was changing, and at least for the moment, it didn't seem like there was a ton of excitement for new music by Mr. Cassidy or any of the other teen idols from the 70s. Yep, just ask Mr. Donald Clark Osmond about the early 80s. Rough times indeed. So Sean reinvented himself. He focused on acting, live theater, and you know what? He was good. Wait, he wasn't just good, he was great. The culmination of this era in Sean's career has to be starring with Petula Clark and his brother David in the hit musical Blood Brothers. It was while Sean was acting in Blood Brothers that he began work on his first screenplay. It was for a show titled American Gothic. Partnering with the great Sam Raimi, the show was an odd mix of horror and subtle dark humor. Set in a sleepy little town in South Carolina, critics absolutely loved the show. Sean was in seventh heaven and had great plans for multiple seasons of the program. Unfortunately, American Gothic is one of those shows that just got away. The ratings weren't there and CBS didn't have the chutzpah or whatever you want to call it to back it for a second season. However, the industry did take notice of Sean as a creator and he was given the opportunity to work behind the scenes from that point forward. And with that, he was involved in the short-lived Heath Ledger TV series Roar as well as the wonderful re-envisioning of The Wizard of Oz called Emerald City. Both of the shows gained a cult following but neither of them could be categorized as hit TV shows while they were initially being broadcast. Thankfully, Sean's latest efforts with a television show on NBC called New Amsterdam seem to be bucking that trend. So far, both critics and audiences have been very positive in their reactions, and it looks like Mr. Casty may have a genuine hit on his hands. That said, TV audiences and especially network executives can be a fickle lot. 
so only time will tell. Sean has been married three times and has eight children. Whew! That's a bunch. Holy cow, Mr. Casty, you have my respect. He's been married to his third wife, Tracy, since 2004. I couldn't find a ton of pics of Sean's family, so I can only assume that he prefers some privacy when it comes to his loved ones. Totally understandable, so I won't dig. I will, however, point fans of Sean to his Twitter page. He's quite active on Twitter, and it's a great way to understand what is important to him these days. One last pick. Yep, I really did love those crossover episodes with both the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. Great memories, at least for me. Alright, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe share this video on Facebook or Twitter. And what the heck, why not subscribe to the channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But as always, most importantly, thank you so much for watching.